So throughout this election cycle, Hillary Clinton has been endorsed by a number of Republicans, and that's not honestly too surprising given that she's war hawkish just like them. And also seeing that the Republican Party nominee actually poses an existential threat to the party itself. So it's not too surprising that many Republicans are crossing party lines to support her. But what is surprising is how Hillary Clinton is responding to some of these endorsements. So for example, John Negroponte endorsed Hillary Clinton. And I won't get into him because I want to focus on a different endorsement she's seeking. But all you have to do is Google John Negroponte and death camps and see what comes up and you'll be frightened. Now, he endorsed Hillary Clinton and this is a known war criminal. And what did Hillary Clinton do? Did she publicly distance herself from him? No, she released a press statement gloating about how he endorsed her. So rather than running away from these types of war criminals and reassuring her base that she isn't the war criminal we think she is, Hillary Clinton is running towards them. Now, she's also seeking the endorsement of Condoleezza Rice, also a war hawk who helped start an illegal war in Iraq. But Hillary Clinton also started that with her vote. Now, here's what's most puzzling to me. Hillary Clinton is currently seeking the endorsement of war criminal Henry Kissinger. And I can't even talk about half of the things that Henry Kissinger did. But let's just say that he should not be free right now. He should be locked up and in prison for the things that he did. He not only committed war crimes, but he committed things that are considered as crimes against humanity by many, many people. So I'm going to talk about the implications of this potential endorsement and why Henry Kissinger is such a bad, egregious person. So The Nation explains Hillary Clinton is courting the endorsement of Henry Kissinger. No surprise, Kissinger and the Clintons go back a ways to when Bill, in the early 1990s, sought out Kissinger's support to pass NAFTA and to, in the words of economist Jeff Fox, serve as the perfect tutor for a new Democratic president trying to convince Republicans and their business allies that they could count on him to champion Reagan's vision. Hillary has continued the apprenticeship, soliciting Kissinger's advice and calling him, quote, friend. So he's been a longtime ally to the Clintons and literally taught Bill Clinton how to be more conservative and how to be more like Reagan. And back then, that made sense in some ways because Ronald Reagan, basically, we call it the Reagan Revolution for a reason, right? He was very influential. Uh, much of the Democratic electorate had started to look to the neoliberal policies of uh, the Republicans and Reagan. So this is what Bill Clinton did. He considered himself a third-way Democrat in order to actually be electorally viable again and to move Democrats in the direction of Ronald Reagan. So now they continue. As Richard Nixon's aide, Kissinger helped plan and execute a murderous illegal foreign policy in Southeast and South Asia, Southern Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. As reckless and immoral as anything Trump now portends, millions died as a result of his actions. Kissinger and Nixon threatened to use nuclear weapons and indeed, Kissinger helped inscribe the threat of limited nuclear war into doctrine. Kissinger in the 1970s not only dug the hole that the greater Middle East finds itself in, but as an influential cheerleader for both the first Gulf War in 1991 and its 2003 sequel, helped drive the United States into that ditch. Now, The Intercept cited a nice summary from uh, Christopher Hitchens' book, uh, The Trial of Henry Kissinger, which just includes a list of some of the war crimes that Henry Kissinger has committed. So, one, the deliberate mass killing of civilian populations in Indochina, deliberate collusion in mass murder, and later, an assassination in Bangladesh, the personal suborning and planning of murder of a senior constitutional officer in a democratic nation, Chile, with which the United States was not at war, personal involvement in a plan to murder the head of state in the democratic nation of Cyprus, the incitement and enabling of genocide in East Timor, personal involvement in a plan to kidnap and murder a journalist living in Washington, D.C. Now, just to remind you, this is someone who Hillary Clinton herself described as, quote, a friend who uh, has advised her while she was Secretary of State multiple times. He checked in on her and uh, he acted as a form of counsel to her. So this is very, very troubling. Now, he isn't just a bad person because of all the blood he has on his hands, but he's also corrupt. And when he was Secretary of State, he did many things to enrich himself personally. 
Hmm, sounds kind of familiar, right? Now also, he played a role in facilitating global inequality through neoliberal economic policies as Gerald Ford's Secretary of State Kissinger was key to making sure Saudi Arabia and, until its revolution, Iran's growing mountain of petrodollars were recycled through private banks and arms merchants in Germany, the United Kingdom, and the United States, undercutting third world demands that capital be used to fund a more equitable global economy. So now if I told you any more about the ways in which he tried to personally enrich himself, about the ways that he tried to prop up brutal authoritarian regimes in Latin America, we'd be here all day. There's a lot. There's so much. I'll include links down below so you can read more about him. But let's just note that this guy makes Donald Trump look like Jimmy Carter. That's how grotesque of a person Henry Kissinger really is. Now, does this imply that Hillary Clinton is as bad as Henry Kissinger? No, it doesn't. Although there are many parallels between him and her when it comes to the corruption and the warmongering, but she's certainly not on the same level as him in terms of committing these atrocities. But Hillary Clinton shouldn't be actively courting his endorsement. She should be running far away from him. Now, when there was a report that the Koch brothers were actually contemplating whether or not they would be donating to Hillary Clinton, since Donald Trump is such a maniac, Hillary Clinton came out and disavowed the Kochs and said, you know what, keep your money, I don't want it. She took to Twitter nearly immediately to say, I do not want your endorsement. And she's not doing that for Henry Kissinger, someone who I think is more politically toxic than the Koch brothers. Henry Kissinger has a lot of blood on his hands. He's just a bad person. And the fact that Hillary Clinton is seeking validation from someone like that, seeking an endorsement from someone like that, when she should be embarrassed to even be associated with him, it really speaks to how she would perform as president of the United States. It's scary, and I don't trust her with foreign policy. Now, does that mean that I trust Donald Trump? Absolutely not. But this is a Democratic presidential nominee. We shouldn't have to worry about whether or not they're going to be starting more unnecessary wars, but this is the modern Democratic establishment. They're just as corrupt and just as war hawkish as Republicans. In the last debate, I believe in her book, very good book, by the way, in her book and in this last debate, she talked about getting the approval or the support or the mentoring of Henry Kissinger. Now, I find it rather amazing, because I happen to believe that Henry Kissinger was one of the most destructive secretaries of state in the modern history of this country. I am proud to say that Henry Kissinger is not my friend. I will not take advice from Henry Kissinger. And in fact, Kissinger's actions in Cambodia, when the United States bombed that country, overthrew Prince Sino created the instability for Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge to come in, who then butchered some three million innocent people, one of the worst genocides in the history of the world. So count me in as somebody who will not be listening to Henry Kissinger. Well, I know journalists have asked who you do listen to on foreign policy, and we have yet to know who that is. Well, it ain't Henry I, Kissinger, that's, that's fine. for sure. That's fine. <laughs> you know, I listen to a wide variety of voices uh, that have expertise in various areas. I think it is fair to say, uh, whatever the complaints that you want to make about him are, that with respect to China, one of the most challenging relationships we have his opening up China and his ongoing relationships uh, with the leaders of China is an incredibly useful relationship for the United States of America. So if we want to pick and choose, and I certainly do, people I listen to, people I don't listen to, people I listen to for certain areas, then I think we have to be fair and look at the entire world because it's a big, complicated world out there. It is. And yes, people we may disagree with on a number of things may have some insight, may have some relationships that are important for the president to understand in order to best protect the United States. I find it. I mean, it's just a very different, you know, historical perspective here. Uh, Kissinger was one of those people during the Vietnam era oh, who talked <clears throat> about the domino theory. Not everybody remembers that. You do, I do. The domino theory. You know, if Vietnam goes, China, da 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 That's what he talked about. The great threat of China. And then after the war, this is the guy who, in fact, yes, you're right, he opened up relations with China and now pushed various type of trade agreements resulting in American workers losing their jobs 
as corporations move to China, the terrible authoritarian communist dictatorship he warned us about, now he's urging American companies to shut down and move to China. Not my kind of guy. Senator.